When you create a new Swift UI app, you'll get a selection of files and maybe 100 lines of code in total. Most of the code doesn't do anything and is just there as placeholders to give you something to fill in. You can safely ignore it for now, but as you progress through this course, that will change. Inside Xcode, you should see the following files in the space on the left, which is called the Project Navigator. AppDelegate.swift contains code for managing your app. It used to be common to add code here, but these days it's quite rare. SceneDelegate.swift contains code for launching one window in your app. This doesn't do much on iPhone, but on iPad, where users can have multiple windows of your app open at the same time, this is important. ContentView.swift contains the initial user interface, or UI, for your program, and is where we'll be doing all the work in this project. Assets.xeassets is an asset catalog, a collection of pictures that you want to use in your app. You can also add colors here, along with app icons, iMessage stickers, and more. LaunchScreen.storyboard is a visual editor for creating a small piece of UI to show when your app is launching. Info.plist is a collection of special values that describe to the system how your app works, which version it is, which device orientations you support, and more. Things that aren't code, but are still very important. And finally, preview content is a yellow group with preview assets or exe assets inside. This is another asset catalog, this time specifically for example images you want to use when you're designing your user interface, to give you an idea of how they might look when the program's running. All our work for this project will take place in contentview.swift, which Xcode will already have opened for you. It has some comments at the top, those things marked with two slashes at the start, and they are ignored by Swift, so you can use them to add explanations about how your code works. Below the comments are 10 or so lines of code. Before we start writing our own code, it's worth going over what all that code does, because a couple of things there will be new. First, import Swift UI tells Swift that you want to use all the functionality given to us by the Swift UI framework. Apple provides us with many frameworks for things like machine learning, audio playback, image manipulation, and more. So rather than assume our program wants to use everything ever, we instead say which parts we want to use so they can be loaded. Second, struct content view conforms the view, creates a new struct called content view, saying that it conforms to the view protocol. View comes from Swift UI and is the basic protocol that must be adopted by anything you want to draw on the screen. All text, buttons, images, and more are all views, including your own layouts that combine other views. Third, var body returns some view, defines a new computed property called body, which has an interesting type, some view. This means it returns something that conforms to the view protocol but that extra some keyword adds an important restriction. It must always be the same kind of view being returned. You can sometimes return one type of thing and other times return a different type of thing. We'll look at this feature more shortly, but for now, just remember that it means one specific sort of view must be sent back from this property. The view protocol has only one requirement, which is that you have a computed property called body that returns some view. You can and will add more properties and methods to your view structs, but body is the only thing that's required. Fourth, text hello world creates a text view using the string hello world. Text views are simple pieces of static text that get drawn onto the screen and will automatically wrap across multiple lines as needed. Below the content view struct, you'll see a content view preview struct, which informs the preview provider protocol. This piece of code won't actually form part of your final app that goes to the app store but is instead specifically for Xcode to use so it can show a preview of your UI design alongside your code. These previews use an Xcode feature called the canvas, which is usually visible directly to the right of your code. You can customize the preview code if you want, and they'll only affect the way the canvas shows your layouts. It won't affect the actual app that gets run. Xcode can only show the canvas on macOS Catalina or later, if you don't see the canvas and are already running Catalina, go to the editor menu and select canvas. If you don't have Catalina, you'll need to run your code in the simulator in order to see how it looks. Now, very often you'll find that an error in your code stops Xcode's canvas from updating. You'll see something like automatic preview updating paused and you can press resume to fix it. As you'll be doing this a lot, let me recommend an important shortcut. Option, command, P does the same as clicking resume.